So I was doing some more research into various K-pop bands and like going through and checking out different articles and videos and things like that and seeing how exhausted they are and there's compilations of them fainting and collapsing on stage. Like I wanna use this video as an opportunity to kind of start a conversation. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture and try to see what kind of lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, like K-pop is something that I'm trying to learn more about and understand. Like I'm always just fascinated with, you know, society and just like, how our minds work and what grabs people's attention and things like that and something that's been like a phenomenon is k-pop and, and it's everywhere and i'm like okay well what's going on so i've been trying to understand you know i did a video about bts and trying to see like you know what the fan base is like and what's what's drawing people to them but something that i've heard about just watching um channels like philip defranco and some other news channels something i've heard about is just the conditions in which k-pop stars like work under and they're exhausted and I was just researching this, and one of the things I came across was, you know, these compilation videos of K-pop stars being so exhausted that they're fainting and collapsing on stage. And this led me to doing some more research, and I'm just like, okay, what else is going on? And there's entire videos and compilations just about, like, this dark side of K-pop in South Korea. I saw one about, you know, a group, I think it's called the East Light, and they were being abused. There was talk about abusing, you know, these young kids with like a bat and like strangling with like guitar strings. And then there's talk of like prostitution and like plastic surgery that is sometimes not even like the K-pop stars idea to do it. They're talking about these things called like slave contracts, talk about 20 hour days. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, holy crap. Right? So I, I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking about this and like, I, I, I'm not, you know, putting like a hardcore opinion on this, but like I mentioned in the intro, I kind of want to just discuss this to start a conversation because something that just fascinates me just about all of us is just the lack of connectedness that we have. And you have something like K-pop, which a lot of people have asked me to start doing videos on, which I'm trying to do and trying to learn more about because of the positive message that they send out there and the, you know, positivity. And I've, I've seen comments on like my own videos that I've done lately and people saying like, oh my God, you know, I love their music so much. It's helped, you know, brighten up my day. Um, somebody even said like it helped like save their daughter's life and all that. I'm like, man, this is powerful. This is such a, a good thing, right? But when you're seeing what the K-pop stars are going through, it's like, where, you know, what, where, where are we at with this thing? Because it's like, they're going through such horrendous things to give us this thing that we want, we crave, we need, whether it's being connected with their music or just having, you know, uh, these like ultra stars to kind of look up to and be excited about. So like, where's that balance? Because they're influencing millions and millions and millions and millions of people and brightening up their day and bringing smiles to faces, but like, they're suffering at the cost of this, right? So the first thing I wanna talk about is just us as a society. And I think about this stuff. Um, like, I don't know where, you know, my clothes came from, you know, my pants, my shoes, my, my socks, I don't know who made those things, right? Like, did they come from, you know, a sweatshop? Is it from like uh, a place with like good working conditions? Like what is going on? I look at, you know, I have an iPhone and what are the conditions like there? And do I research it as much? And for a lot of us, like that ignorance is bliss. Like, I don't wanna know where this came from. I don't know, I don't wanna know the story behind this. I don't wanna, I don't wanna know about those working conditions because these things make my life better, so do I not wanna know? So should we be investigating it more? Like, just going back to the topic of clothes and things like that, I don't know if any of you watched Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, but he had a whole episode on the clothing industry, and like just watching that, it has me just like rethinking all these things, so I don't know what the solution to that is. Like, do I research everything that I buy? Where are these clothes coming from? How are they made? All those things, and then part of it is when you look at that, it obviously jacks up the price, right? So 
we as people, since we're so disconnected, like, what do we do when we look at like this cheap price? Are we like, eh, you know, whatever, not my problem, right? Like, and it's, it's difficult because we don't want to talk about that stuff. We don't want to think about those things. So we're listening to like K-pop music and it's pretty well known, like what they're going through, right? So I don't know if BTS is like, I don't know, not having these issues, if they're just, everything's great for them. Like, I don't know what that is, you know? But it even goes to like the foods we eat. And I, and when I talk about this stuff, like again, I'm just trying to present a conversation um, because I'm a vegetarian, right? And I'm not one of those moral high ground vegetarians. I'm like, you awful person, right? If you wanna eat meat, do your thing, right? But like it came to a point for me, like I, I mainly started um, become, uh, being a vegetarian mainly for health reasons. Uh, six and a half years ago, I had congestive heart failure. So I had some blood pressure issues. Um, going meat free has helped me out a lot. I'm not 100% vegan, but it helped me out a lot. But then like the more I looked at things and thought about things, I'm just like, okay, like are, you know, factory farms, is that something that I want to, you know, be a part of? Because the more we feed into that, the more they're going to keep creating it, right? So with K-pop stars getting all these fans and making so much money, you know, it, it doesn't really tell the, the music industry that we don't want this, right? So I don't know what the solution to that is. Like when K-pop stars are so exhausted that they're fainting and collapsing on stage, it's like, but they're fainting and collapsing in front of thousands and thousands of people filling up stadiums and things like that. So that goes back to like this kind of positive reinforcement. We are, as a society, feeding into that. But the other topic I wanna to go into is the price that so many people pay for fame. You know what I mean? And, and this can go back to like childhood. So something that I was learning about in my, in my research is that like they start to groom these, these kids. So, you know, within this span, when they become like teenagers or whatever, they will be these like K-pop stars or they'll at least try to be K-pop stars. So a lot of this, like we've already seen it happen in like Hollywood with child actors and everything like that. Like now that I'm an adult and I've seen so many child actors just completely like fall and just, you know, get into drugs and just have mental health issues and all of that. And I look at that and when it comes to kids, I'm thinking about the parents and the parents pushing this on their kids because most kids don't even know what they want to do or they know what they want to do. But if you're an adult, like think about how many times those things have changed. But for the children or even teenagers or even people in their 20s or even us, me and you, like what is the cost of that thing, that dream that we want to pursue? Is it worth it? So it's very well known because even like, even though I'm not like fully into like K-pop, like I've known about these, these working conditions. I've, like I said, I've seen stories on Philip DeFranco. So if these K-pop stars know what it's like, why are they getting into that, right? And then that all goes back to like what we believe is going to make us happy. You know what I mean? Like those BTS dudes from what I can see, they seem pretty happy and they're putting a little positive message out there, right? But so many of us, like how many of you out there work your butt off and put in your blood, sweat and tears at work and you're working overtime and you're doing all this stuff just so you can move up the ranks in this, you know, uh, uh, system at your work and get promotions and raises and all this. And why do you want that? Is it for status? Is it so you can buy things, which is, also a form of status. Oh, look at the nice car I have. Look at the nice house I have. Like, what are you willing to put yourself through to get that thing? And when we look at this, when we look at celebrity mental health issues, it's like, was it worth it? Was it worth it to get that thing? And part of it, I guess I can see too is, you know, one person saying, you know what, I'm gonna go through this just so I can help out other people through my music or through my singing or through my work or whatever it is. Like something that I knew damn well making this YouTube channel was I'm putting myself on the front lines for criticism, for hate, for people to try to, you know, dig up things, for people to create narratives about me, for all these other things. I knew I was getting into that. Doesn't mean that it doesn't suck sometimes, but I knew that's what I was doing. And one of the reasons I'm still here is because I feel like I have an important message that I, I wanna get out there, so it makes it all worth it. So I guess in a sense, I can kind of see where some of these K-pop stars 
might be doing it, what some of their motivation is. But again, at the same time, you would have to kind of make that your motivation if you're signing these contracts that lock you in for like a decade. So you might as well make the best of that situation. But something um, I came across too was, um, you know, K-pop stars, you know, uh, taking their own lives and things like that. And I'm just like, uh, so that's something I might talk about at another point when I learn more about those stories. But again, I just want to have this conversation like, what do you as a, a consumer or K-pop uh, fan, like think about these things? What what can we do or where where is that balance, you know, of what they're dealing with and what our enjoyment is? And is that right? Is it wrong? I don't know, but I just wanted to make this video because I was doing some research and it was on my mind. I wanted to talk. I like talking with all of you is what I like doing. So leave your comments down below. Let's have a conversation, okay? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to be become a patron, get involved in our monthly Q&A and some other perks and benefits, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.